Hello, delighted to be here. JP Fahey, Derry City fan in the red corner, and Nigel Hegarty in the blue corner as a Finn Harps fan. Now, JP knows needs no introduction, really, because he's a regular at this stage. This is your debut, Nigel. How does it feel? Oh, I'd say I'm quaking in my boots. <laughs> <laughs> you might be after Sunday. Ah, sure, look. There'd be nothing new with it. <laughs> now, you're the media guy, or part of the media team at Finn Harps, aren't you? And you're also the drummer, but you're also an actual musician. You have a, I think I see amps in the background and a keyboard, is that right? Ah, you could see any sort of instrument around here. This, uh, this is the, uh, the music sanctuary in my house. Yeah, I do a bit of music. Uh, it's got I do a bit of Bagpipes, no. It's funny you say that. My brother plays bagpipes, so uh, we'll leave him to that. <laughs> no way, really. Now, this game, obviously, on Sunday is a big, big game. Um, but if we forget about the league table for a minute, Nigel, and look at it in isolation, how big is this game for both clubs generally? So not uh, West generally, generally, you'd say every mm. year it's, it's, it's a big financial game for both clubs as opposed to a big game on the pitch. Um, you know, the, the rivalry is well talked about. It's, you know, it's up there with the, like many people would disagree. Uh, for me, it's up there with the likes of Bows and Rovers as one of the big rivalries in Ireland. But on the pitch, it hasn't, you know, a, a, apart from fan rivalries, it hasn't made anything significant on the pitch for years. But it, look, it's still a huge financial boost to both clubs. You expect a full house in the Brandywell or in Finn Park or McGinn Park or wherever it's been played in recent years. You expect a big crowd. You expect a big atmosphere. You expect the clubs to be up for it. It's it it is still a very big game, uh, and I suppose this year it's at this Sunday's game is more significant than other years. With uh, you know both clubs really needing a win for oh, two reasons. Really, Harps need the win to get off the bottom of the table. Derry need the win to try and pick themselves back up to get in the European hunt. So it's probably added significance this year compared to other years. Yeah, funnily enough, uh, JP, a win for Finn Harps, I believe, puts them a point behind Derry City. I know Derry would have a game in hand. If Finn Harps were to win on Sunday, would that be concerning in the relegation? Do you think Derry could be dragged down there? Um, I think you have to look at it that way. Um, you can't be sitting a point above uh, the playoff zone or the drop zone and not think of, of what's behind you. Um, yeah. But uh, as you say, if we get a, if we get a win, it's a possible, possibility that we could end up in the top four so it's it's swings and roundabouts really isn't it um it, it is a big game as Nigel says because if Van Harps get the one they're off the bottom but the incentive for them is it the possibility going to drag Derry City right in the the mix as well and it would leave it an uh, extremely sprint finish at the end to see who's going to avoid the drop and uh, Nigel how do you find Van Harps's form because I think they've picked up in recent weeks now, most of their good results have been in the Cup, which uh, to Ali Horgan seems a bit frustrating because I've seen an interview, was it Bray Wanderers? I've seen an interview, and he seemed almost annoyed that they are picking up wins in the Cup <laughs> and not quite getting the wins in the league. But uh, let's be honest, their form has been quite good. Uh, they're always tough to beat, Finn Harps. I mean, people talk about them, but you rarely see Finn Harps get a hiding, let's be honest about it. Um, they're hard to beat in Finn Park. They had a good performance against Sligo, didn't they? Um, what was the killer there? They got a red card straight after equalising, which just killed them in that match against an informed Sligo Rovers team. So, how do you see who are the key men, I suppose, coming into this game? Do you think for Finn Harps? Uh, I don't know. I think everyone talks about Finn Harps being this, you know, defensive team, this team that's set up well to frustrate other teams. But I think, and, and JP might back me up on this, so the game of the Brandywell at the start of the season, was a, it wasn't that at all. You know, Finn Harps have set out a bit differently this year. You know, Ollie's gone, he's sort of adopted a, a 4-3-3 this year. It's it's more of a, you know, get on the ball, attack the team. Uh, it's a fast-paced, closed-down, counter-attacking. It, it's, it's, in a strange way, it almost uh, it looks like a Stephen Kenny setup as opposed to an Ollie Horgan <laughs> setup. Which, which is really strange because, you know, traditionally, Ollie Horgan has been associated with, you know, a five at the back team. But in, in terms of key men, I think uh, Carlos Sullivan coming back from injury is a big boost because we have been lacking goals. Um, Alex Cogler has, you know, 
hit form recently, a couple of goals. You, you give him service, he's he's going to bang one into the back of the net. You know, he's a bullet header on him, and he almost scored another bullet header against Sligo the other night, only for a world-class save from McGinty. Um, you, you're looking again towards, I know he's, he's 38 years of age, but Raf Cretaro could spring from the bench and offer you something there again. It's, 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 you know, I have no great worries about the defensive side. I think we have... I won't say as good a backline as anyone in the league, but we have a solid backline with good experience there. The likes of Dave Webster, Steve Follin. These lads have been there and done it with the top teams as well. You know, they, they know what they're at. Uh, Sam Todd is as, as good a young player as in the league. You have a good, good backline. A very decent goalkeeper, Mark McGinley, who what was it, 14 or 15 clean sheets last season. So I, I have no fear for the backline. We're costing some silly goals, but... You know, at this level, that's to be expected. You know, we're not playing in, you know, the Champions League or the Premier League. At this level, you expect the odd silly goal here and there. But uh, I think key men is definitely the, the attack starting to find form has really coincided there this last few weeks and a couple of wins. Do you think the suspensions will be key going into this game? And I'd imagine Rory Delap can't play. Rory Delap? Rory <laughs> <laughs> Delap. Rory the Lap. That's going back a bit, isn't it? I'd imagine he can't. <laughs> I'd imagine he can't. There'll be no long throws anyway on Sunday. I'd imagine he can't play, though. For, Tony uh, McNamee. Tony McNamee. Yeah. Tony McNamee, Tony Shane McElhenney, Dave Webster. You've, you've plenty of long throws in that team. It's still a key weapon for Harps. Yeah. No uh, for the Lap, but so. no, su- suspensions are going to play a part. Um, Mark Coyle is a big loss in centre midfield. You know, He's he's a bit of a terrier in there. He's he's, uh, he's sort of kind of been the natural successor to Mickey Funston in midfield there for the last few years. For us, he's he's the lad that kind of if you want someone to go in and win a tackle in midfield, he's he's your guy. Like and you know obviously it's it it has played its part as well that he's he's had his fair share of bookings this year as a result. But uh, you know he's going to be a big loss in there. Cost of our Siddiqui at the back as well is going to be a big loss. He's been he's been tremendous since coming in from Hibs initially on loan, uh, but he's. He's with us now, permanent. Uh, but he um, he's a top player as well. But there there is there is replacements there. There is ready made replacements. The, I won't say they're not going to be missed because they are going to be missed. They're first team players. But you know the fact that there is a more depth to the Harp squad this year than there has been in recent year in pre, uh, recent years. So um, I, I'm I'm not overly worried. But um, they're definitely going to be a loss. And then Ollie, you know. It's hard to know what way he's going to set it up. It's hard to know so what way he's going to play. Uh, no, he's going to be suspended, isn't he? I don't know. I think Ollie Ollie goes to a tribunal. I think after that, um, ah. it, it depends what's on the referee's report. The other two guys are automatically suspended <laughs> for the red card. Just, but um, it, it's hard to know what way he's going to replace those guys. Um, you have Shane McElhenney coming in there again, who who's a ready-made replacement for one or other of them because he's played at centre midfield for us this year as well, but. I, know, I, I never like to predict an Ollie Horgan team, to be honest, but, but, but you kind of have to wait and see what he goes with. JP, how do you think Derry City will set up? Um, did you travel to the Lyon match, by the way? No, I didn't. No, I, I did. Um, I did have intentions of going, but I think I read Monday night that it was sold out, so I never, I never tried maybe looking to see if it was there was tickets, and then I think later on on Tuesday afternoon I seen that there was tickets, and it was, it was too late at that stage to go, like. Um, yeah, I th- I think we're probably going to see as much as what we've seen so far from the restart. We're going to see Peter Cherry and go the back four. It's I think against Drogheda he went with Cole right back and McGianna and Owen Toll the two centre halves. Obviously Kieran Cole if he's I think he's he's no injury worries. He's going to be playing left back. That's that's a certainty. It's it's whether he goes with Horgan or Darren Cole for right back. Um. Because I think if he goes with Horgan, I think Darren Cole's going to partner Owen Toll at the back. The midfield, you don't know what he's going to do with the midfield, but the, the attack, I think, is going to be Figueroa and probably Adam Hamill. Aaron, didn't he? Yeah. Probably Figueroa and Adam Hamill with either one of Akintundi or Mate. So I think he's got so many options in midfield that he, he could literally is pick and choose who he wants. Personally, I'd like to see him go with Jackie, Kieran Harkin, for him and McCormick, and maybe one hour. Um, because I think, I think Jackie's a local lad, and I think we against Van Harps we need so. And Jackie grew up a Derry City supporter, so it's not just that he's a local lad. He wants to win this game for the fans, and I think we need to have somebody in the middle of the park. It's out there 
not just as a player, but as a supporter. That's an interesting point, though, Nigel. Would you rather to see Kieran Harkin basically on the bench for Derry City? Uh, honestly, I don't have much of a preference. Uh, you know, I think Harps have little to worry about what way Derry set up, more worry about what we do ourselves on the pitch. Uh, as you said, like you referenced it earlier, uh, the Sligo game where 11 v 11 on the pitch, it was, um, you know, it was anyone's game against an informed Sligo team, uh, got back 1-1 one, one and, and looked like the better side. Uh, so I, it's about, <laughs> I suppose, for Harps, keeping 11 men on the pitch. And, uh, <laughs> and the manager in the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you <said> that. <laughs> men on the pitch and and you know uh, stick to our own game plan and and worry little about what way Derry set up is is the way I would approach it. But I, I, I can't speak for Ollie Horgan. That's that'll be my own preference, you know. I think if you look back at Ollie Horgan, I think Ollie Horgan must have the record for number of points gained against Derry City in the league because I've been following Derry from the the late nineties and. I can the first time I remember us dropping a point against Van Harps was in the 2010 season when we we're in the first division. But since Ali Horgan's come up, he's picked up a few wins. I think maybe three or four, and a couple of draws. So he knows how to set up against Derry. They how to frustrate them. Um, but at the same time, it seems to be that if Derry get the first goal against them, he struggles. They know how to maybe come back on it because I think Derry have given Van Harps a couple of hidings uh, when they've got the first goal. Yeah, it's interesting. The game earlier on the season, obviously, Derry scored a late equaliser in that game. It was a game that Finn Harfs would probably feel they should have won, to be honest yes, with sure. you. The last few minutes, you obviously feel you're going to win anyway. But um, does that have any bearing, do you think, on the match of the weekend? No, I don't think it does because there's a lot of personal a lot of personnel changes between the two the two uh, teams. I think that night, Finn Harfs, they, they, they probably disappointed with the draw because... It, they defended brilliantly. They they stopped Derry and Derry were running out of ideas. And I think in the end, uh, uh, Nigel touched on it earlier. Carlos Sullivan got man of match. I think that night. I think what Van Herbst were missing that night was just an out and out goal score because of the chances that they created that night they could have been two or three nil up before the end. And at the end, Figueroa just with a great bit of skill and got past Sam Todd. And you're sitting watching the back because I think it was live in RT, and then you go back and you watch watch the goal, and you're thinking as a manager, you're probably saying, "Take him out, just give away the free kick, and we can regroup." But I don't think that game's going to have a bearing because obviously both teams have sort of struggled, and we've had a long layoff, and both teams have kind of been patchy since we came back. Yeah, how do you feel about Messi? He's played a couple of games. I think he scored once, has he, JP? He, he scored once against Shelburne from the penalty spot, but I think he done really well that day. He he struggled second half because I think he he has he hasn't played in about eight months, so yeah. he, he struggled with his fitness. I think him and Akintunde have have mm. been brilliant since they came out. They both know how to hold up a ball. Um, just we just need one of them to be a number nine and just be there instead of trying to go chase after the ball. And stuff like that. We just if both are on the pitch, one of them needs to stay in the middle because that European game, we had so many chances for the penalty spot. There was nobody there. Um, I like both of them. I think they're good. They can hold the ball up. They they tr- cause baller for defenders. For, for I think especially Mate, I think he's. I think I can turn. They can play anywhere along the front three. Um, yeah. but Mate, I think is a perfect uh man to lead the line, especially maybe against Van Harps, who are going to be. Probably yeah. uh, the way they're going to be in defence, they've sort of got two strong centre halves, don't they? Like, oh, 100%. No, it's, it's interesting because for Finn Harps, I'd say about three weeks ago, I couldn't see where goals were going to come from. Suddenly, mm-hmm. Cogler can score three and two, and he looks sharp against Sligo as well. Um, he's been at the club a little while now. It seems to have, well, what's been the difference for you in the last few weeks? Is it simply goals, or has there been a shift in confidence? or? I'd say it's a little bit of A, a little bit of B. Um, Cogger came in ahead of the Cork game just before the break. Um, he actually, well, he scored, I say, in inverted commas down in Cork when he knocked out Liam Boston in the process. But he uh, he, he looked very good in that game, um, you know. But I don't know whether he t- that, that clash with the keeper hit his confidence a bit. or I, I, can't, I can't tell for the lad himself, but... 
you know, the, the lockdown obviously didn't help. Uh, he went back to Austria and, you know, he wasn't getting that settling in time with the squad. You know, he's he's living in Bal Buffet again now. He's living with, um, I think he's living with Kosovo Siddiqui. I could be wrong on that, but, at the, you know, he's, he's getting to know the players a bit more now. He's settling in a bit more. You know, don't forget, he's still a young lad. I think he's only 22 or 23 or something like that himself. You know, he's still a young lad. He, he still has a lot of settling in to do. He can't expect it overnight in a couple of weeks and maybe the system wasn't suiting him one way or the other and now with the the kind of the switch to the 4-3-3 formation Eddie Delap was providing the service for him we've seen it down in Waterford uh, you know that Eddie put in the cross got the head on it bang there was a goal and and similar it worked backwards again then where Cogler hit the shot and Eddie got the 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 goal uh, for the winner uh, the two of them seem to be working very well together again in Bray we saw it for the cup game um you know, you provide the service for him, he, he'll he'll get you a few goals. He might not be the most, you know, uh, technically gifted number 10, number 9, whatever way you want to put him. He might not be, you know, uh, Alain Messi with the ball at his feet, but he's, uh, you know, he, you give him service, he will get you a goal. It's it's as simple as that there. And that's what you want from your big target man striker. <laughs> I think uh, with Carlo Sullivan back now, you could see Carl playing al- alongside him. Uh, Mark Russell's kind of been a... A square peg in a round hole there uh, as as a left back playing striker, but he's done very well. He's uh, you know to his credit, he has done really really well. Uh, you know, in a, in a completely new role for him. You know, we spoke to him ourselves for uh, Finn Harps TV after the Bray game, and he says, you know, this this is a completely new role to me. I I only ever played it in underage football, so uh, he's he's learning as he's going along. So. But then with Carl back fit again, you could probably see him slotting back into that left-sided winger role. And you have Carlos Sullivan down one wing and Eddie's lap down another wing. That's a dangerous prospect for a big six-foot, six striker like Alex Kogler standing in the middle of the box waiting on the ball. Yeah, 100%. The thing with Mark Russell, I've seen that interview as well, is that uh, he'd play anywhere. He's got a great attitude, hasn't he? And his application's fantastic. He's just one of those players that you'd be confident almost to play anywhere in the team maybe apart from center back and goal but elsewhere yeah, but, you won't well look he's it you know he, he's only a young fellow himself as well he's only yeah. 23 or 24 but he has good experience of you know a, a semi-decent level in scotland you know he played most of his yeah. career in the, the scottish championship um you know he played a lot with uh uh morton and he played with falkirk before coming to finn harp so you know he he was a surprise signing when he came over but last season he was a revelation at left back this season now sam todd's kind of taken the left back spot off him so finding him a role in the team as a striker was a surprise to i think everyone involved with finn harps but he's done really well and as you say you know he, he's got the head down he's got on with it and to his credit he's done really really well so you have to kind of applaud him for that Russell was actually on trial at Derry before he signed for Finn Harps. That's right. He was. Yeah, he was. He, he was. He was on trial with Harps, and then he went into Derry. But uh, for one reason or another, we rejected uh, him. <laughs> all, all, all he done is magic there again. I think we rejected him. I think that was his point. Okay, so. <laughs> we, we sent him to Finn Harps. That's his point, is it? <laughs> we'll see who has the bragging rights after Sunday. Anyway, we'll do <laughs> do you see? Um, is this a vital match for Nigel or for Nigel for Finn Harps? Do you think they have to win this, or do you feel that way really necessarily? Um, it's getting to that stage, isn't it? You know, there's only what, eight games left to go. Um, I think I think it is getting to that point of where every game becomes a must win now or at least must not lose. You must start getting points on the board. But at home to Derry, you know, Derry, as JP alluded to, aren't, aren't in the best of form either. You know, uh, really need to be targeted and go in here. You know, it's, it is a big local derby. It is a game where otherwise you'd be seeing, you know, four or five thousand people in Finn Park potentially for a game of this value. You know, uh, other years, you know, Harris has been languishing bottom of the table. Derry has been up the top. It's been a nothing game, really. And you've had two, two and a half thousand at it. But with such importance behind this game, I think it would be a huge crowd in Finn Park. Um, I think that would have played a big part in the game. Uh, but this time, you know, it's an empty ground. It's 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 going to be tricky for the players. But still, the home advantage will count for Harps, you know, used to the pitch. The pitch is in fantastic condition in Finn Park. Um, it's 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 as good as I've seen it in years. Uh, so it's it's it is going to play a part. I think it is getting to a stage where it is a must win though. Um, it's 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 squeaky bum time now to put it that way. JP, will you be uh, standing outside the gates? No, um, 
I'll probably be sitting watching it at home um, because you don't get a good view from the way end anyway at Fun Park, so I don't think it's going to be much better outside. <laughs> That's your excuse to lose. Isn't uh, it? Yeah, I'm going to. Sit, I'm just going to sit and watch it in the house. <laughs> Where do you think JP uh, Derry can finish this season reality? Do you, th- do you think they can get into Europe ahead of the likes of possibly Dundalk and Sligo Rovers? Or do you think there's too much for them to do? Points-wise, they're there. But... Yeah, I think we need to win this weekend if we're going to finish in the top four. Um, because at the minute we're playing catch-up because the teams around us won. They're, when we were, because we've had a couple of weeks off because of the international break. We had four away in international duty. Um, if we don't win this weekend, then I think we're going to have to win the Cup to get into Europe. Um, if we win this weekend, it's game on with Dundalk and Sligo because we obviously have the game in hand against Dundalk. I think we're if getting the one against Van Harp is going to be absolutely crucial because with Derry and Van Harp, yes, they're 45 minutes a difference, but with the Derry and, Van, Derry and Donegal being so close at there's Van Harp supporters spread all around Donegal and they tend to maybe work or shop in Derry and you, you kind of you do have that rivalry um, that's there. It's a different dynamic, uh, Shea or JP, to the uh, Dublin clubs and that because, you know, you've got the Dublin clubs, then you've Bray who are in Wicklow and you have, uh, even though it's at the dock, Drada. But yeah. up there, it's a pocket, isn't it? Really, I know Sligo aren't a mile away, but generally yeah. Derry... Uh, Finn Harps, it's a pocket, isn't it? So it's a big, big difference in that sense, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, because you kind of have the fight in, in, in a show, and I think Finn Harps used to have the hold on a goal, but I think since Derry went to McGinn Park for the year, Derry's kind of got a fan base now in a, in a show. So there's kind of like that kind of rivalry, and I know there's a few people that I work with that are um, from the like up around Rafone stuff, and they have family that would support Finn Harps. So um, there is a rivalry there. Um, I think we need the one on Sunday, not just for the points for Europe, but also they have that kind of bragging rights again. How do you see it, JP, if you're going to call it? It's hard to call because I haven't watched any, I haven't really watched anybody since the restart. And I've just literally watched the Derry games. Um, I've been flicking in and out of. Um, the other games on the watch LOA but I have been following Van Harps on the other teams on the flash score and Harps do seem to be scoring a lot of goals at the minute so I haven't seen their goals to say whether it has been great play or it has been um, mistakes I think if Adrian Delap doesn't play I think that could be um, it could it could help us because it may stop a service Andy Cogler as Nigel touched on earlier so I'm going to go for a 2-1 one day dairy, um, but I think if we're going to win, we're going to have to get the first goal. Nigel, I'd imagine the lap can't play. Is that confirmed? Or, well, or do you want I, 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 could, <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you one way or the other, yeah. to be sure. Yeah. Um, it, it, the terms of these arrangements have all changed with the pandemic. like So you, just, I know you, don't, you don't really know what's happening. like. I know with Georgie Kelly, he couldn't play against Dundalk for St. Pat's, but like two different clubs could be different arrangements. Hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, I know the, the first, the first game. The winner. Yeah. Well, uh, the first game of the year, anyway, the, the lap couldn't play against Derry. But I know that that initial deal was supposedly until June. So what what happened in the meantime after that is anyone's guess. Yeah, anyone's and guess. Ollie being not. Ollie Horgan's been Ollie Horgan, just uh, cards are close to the chest, so y- you never really know. Um, I but... imagine he can't play, but um, all that said, what do you think? Do you think Finn Harps are going to get the three points here? Well, it's it's hard to disagree with JP. Uh, if if Eddie Delap doesn't play, it is it's a struggle to get that ball into Kogler. Um, it's I, I I wouldn't be surprised to see a score draw. Um, Let's see here, yeah. but. You know, some something tells me that this this could be a big game for Harps. This could be a big catalyst to drive us on. Um, you know, the, the big bragging rights, as as JP alludes to, you know that 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 is huge. Still, the bragging rights people still love that. Ollie Horgan won't care if it's Derry we beat or Cork we beat, as long as we get points on the board. Uh, but you know, home home difference could play a part here. I wouldn't be surprised to see a score draw. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Harps win. 
but equally, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Derry win. So it's <laughs> you know, there's there's it's it's literally on anyone's the fence, game. Uh, Nigel. Yeah, <laughs> I am absolutely on the fence with this one. <laughs> The funny thing is, I as a neutral, I actually went for a one-all draw as well. So, but uh, make no mistake about it, Finn Harps are well capable of actually winning this game. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, they definitely. Really are. I mean, I saw obviously Finn Harps beat St. Pat's there a few weeks ago in the cup. Like, their and their intensity in that game was severe. I have to say, it was unbelievable. If they bring that intensity to this game as well, Derry are going to have to match that. And if they don't, yeah. then they're in big trouble. Yeah. Right, lads, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Enjoy that. See you later. Thanks.